the uh, Indian Trail Town Council meeting Tuesday, July 12, 2022, 6.30 regular meeting. If everybody would stand with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You'll remain standing for a moment of silence. You may be seated. Mayor. Okay, motion to add item 9E purchasing approval of 700000 to benefit agencies using surplus funds ARPA. Okay, can I get a motion? A motion. Okay, everybody, raise your hand. Unanimous. Well, you didn't have to raise your hand, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? I make a motion to approve the agenda. Mr. Ambrose uh, has made that motion. All in favor? Okay, presentations. Mayor Cohn. We'll do uh, a quick budget on the ABC store. Um, I believe it. Had, the budget's been given to Jim. Is Jim, you're in here. You okay with everything on the budget? It's all well. If everybody had, hasn't has paid any attention at all, there's a new ABC store that's going on Monroe Road. It uh, actually should have been built and should have been done already, but in the times that we live in, it's sitting there, but it, we need uh, uh, permits and things that drug it out over time. Uh, just for everybody's information, the ABC store, sole purpose is to give tax dollars to the town, and that, that's what it does. Uh, that's the purpose of it. Uh, it's actually run by... Raleigh, but it, it is affiliated with the town. Town council votes on the, uh, the committee that runs the, the store. Uh, and by adding a second store, um, of course, our revenues are, are going to be much higher. Uh, just a couple of things that, I, that I'd like to say. This is kind of like a, a, a mini report, because we need to do this on the ABC. The ABC is. Uh, I hear th some of the troubling things that I hear about with the ABC store is, is where it's put and why it's put there. Uh, first of all, uh, alcohol was, and I don't remember exactly what year it was, we came out of Prohibition. Was it in the 30s when we came out of Prohibition? So it's legal. You can buy alcohol any and everywhere. Uh, it's, uh, since I said it was governed by the town and Raleigh, there's a lot of specifications that that store has to, to do. It, uh, it's very professional. Uh, every, the employees are all trained. And um, I, I, one of the things I also hear is where it was put. It was put uh, in, in the Brandon Oaks area. Well, it was put there because of, of population and people passing by that store. And, of course, what you want is, is people to buy it in Indian Trail and not buy it in, in, in another town. And one of, the other, one of the reasons you do that, or another reason that you do that, is people don't realize one of the leading things that happen with ABC stores is when someone goes to an ABC store, the, the, the worst thing that can happen is they can get to that store and open up a bottle. That's the number one thing when they get in the parking lot. We actually have people, we pay people to go watch for that because they get in the car. And if you think about it, there's a lot of people that, that drink and that they're one, they want to have a drink. So you get in the car, they open up that bottle and take a drink. Uh, therefore, by having it in, in a more concentrated area, it actually keeps people from buying it, let's say, in a town, you know, 
10, 20, 30 minutes away and opening that bottle and drinking it on the way there. So it, it, I think it really is a, is a good reason to have it uh, where, where you have it. So uh, we're looking out for people also that in case they, they open up the bottle. But those are just a couple of things that I hear and, uh, about an ABC store. It, uh, it's very professional uh, operation, and uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to having it. Does so, anybody have any questions on it? Yeah, I frowned upon it when um, when I came on board the council, and uh, I was it was explained to me that all the profit from the alcohol sales goes, <coughs> excuse me, to it's donated, and what doesn't get donated comes back to the town. Isn't that right? It is. Um, so I mean, I kind of felt like um, I'm all right with that. I get it. You know, at first I was totally against it. But, and you brought up a good point, Tom. I, I want to say that uh, uh, the store gives a certain percentage of its uh, profits to, and I'm going to read a couple of them all, the uh, Union County Drug Court, Turning Point, who helps people with alcohol and drug problems, uh, ARC Cabarrus, uh, Union County Community Shelter, uh, and it gives somewhere around eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 each year, and it depends on the the percentage of what the store sales are, but it, it gives to that those different uh, charities, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, it also gives the Union County Sheriff's Department, I think, forty-five thousand dollars a year to not only look out for the uh, ABC store, but to look out for all other stores that sell alcohol in in Union County. So, not only does it protect uh, kids and people from going, it they run operations into, uh, you know, the 7-Eleven or any other store. Uh, so it, it also helps that. So it actually helps. By having an ABC store, it actually <coughs> keeps the bad from happening instead of, uh, instead of the, you know, the bad from being people that drink. So anyway, any other questions at all on that? Yes. I raised my hand. Yes, okay, sir. all right, just make it hard. Right. They uh, want credit for that. So anyway, now um, I just want to add that uh, we get periodic updates on the ABC store, and both stores will be run by one board per state statutes. We have a three-person board, and um, they make the decision. They bought the land, and as a matter of fact, in working with Mr. Waters, which is here in finance, I just want to give a kudos. Is they already purchased the land? I mean, so it's paid for. So this thing hasn't been very well financed so we're looking at this board running two stores and and the town getting a good fair share of profit so that profit also helps your taxes not go up tax rate so we're, we're you know i'll never go in the store i don't drink hard liquor but you know that it's we're, we're glad to have it i do i would like to say good job to the abc board we have a three-person thing and i know uh judy silverquist on the board uh, Mayor Cones on the board, and who's the other? We have someone. David, David so they've done a great job, and I just want to say thank you. We have people sign up for boards and committees in the town, and and they do a great job. So this three-person, congratulations, and and unlike the other store, just so you know, the driveway goes around the back of the store. So if you don't want to sneak in and go to the ABC store. You got less chance of being seen than at the other one. Okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> Anyway, uh, and I believe, if I'm not, uh, Jim, I think we're, the town's going to receive about $225,000 this year and, and some profit by uh, for one store, right. And uh, our budget is actually for $9 million for two stores. Uh, and that's a budget, and of course the store hasn't opened yet, so it, it, uh, I don't want to say it's a, it's a guess, but it's a, our target to do $9 million. So anyway, with that being said, uh, I appreciate it. appreciate the questions. Uh, let's move on. We'll go to new, new employee recognition. Ms. Warren. First day, she jumped right in, got started, did a great job. Um, she is part of our Park and Recreation Department, and she's a recreation specialist. Um, she grew up in Greenville, North Carolina. Anybody know where that is? 
<laughs> um, she went to, graduated from UNC Wilmington and um, started working with the Park and Rec Department in Wilmington and moved to Belmont and worked at the Whitewater Center and at the ASC Greenway. I don't know what it stands, what it means, but ASC. <laughs> Um, as the um, guest services coordinator and so she joined us and we're really happy to have her here and don't know if y'all have any questions for her. <laughs> we couldn't oh, hear your name. Um, Sam McLaughlin. Sam. Yes. Samantha, but she goes by Sam. You can talk. <laughs> Welcome aboard. I got a sister named Sam, so I'll remember. We're glad, we're glad you're here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Council members, can you check your mics for me? Make sure they're all green. Everybody's yes, mic uh, is on. Hey, oh, there he is. I, you've changed clothes since you were here. Hey, as you walk up to the mic tonight, I just want to say uh, the, the parade winners, man, what a great parade. And uh, you guys were fantastic. And you, I think it was the best one ever. And uh, I, I know that it, uh, I know that uh, to me, I've, and I've been in a lot of them, that it was the most people I'd ever seen at a parade before. And, and do we have any estimates on how many, Captain James, do you have an idea? My ballpark guess would be around 3,000. Gotcha. Well, that's a, that's a lot of people. Uh, and uh, we appreciate you doing it and hope to see you again next year. But Hayden, I'm not going to steal any thunder. Go ahead. And, Absolutely. Uh, well, my number was a million, but I was I was <laughs> I, I didn't want any fact checks on that number. So uh, three thousand sounds reasonable too. Um, so uh, thank you all for for having us uh, this evening. You know, and recognizing one of our new staff. Uh, I will say that one of the reasons why the parade goes off so successfully is is the staff. You know, so uh, I extend that to to the Union County Sheriff. Sheriff's Office, you know, there, there's no second guessing in our mind that when we shut down the road, when we run the parade, that, it, that it's a safe route. You know, every year we have an injury or someone falls out because of the heat or trips. Um, we have EMTs on site for a reason, you know. And then my staff, uh, I give nothing but kudos because, you know, I'm stationed at the MC station and the parade is, you know, a mile and a half wide and, and they are jumping into things that I don't even know about until afterwards uh, or sometimes I don't want to know about till afterwards. So uh, I want to give a, a kudos to those folks too. Um, but as you mentioned, Mayor Cohn, uh, I thought the parade was, was a fantastic event. Um, you know, it, it's it brings together the the small town community that that we have, and we continue to grow, and we're, we'll surpass forty thousand if we if we haven't already. But what you see is mom and pop businesses, you see churches, you see youth groups, you see you know organizations, uh, but then you see the community coming out. So I, I there was a woman that shared a story with me that she remembered sitting in the same spot with her parents when she was a youngster, and now she has youngsters as well. So at, at the end of the day, uh, you know, it does bring smiles. You know, it is a memorable experience. It is something that is going to be cherished for, for years to come. So, um, you know, as part of the parade, we, we do have folks like the Sheriff's Office, like the Lions Club, uh, that, that help us out in the Union West Rotary, the judges. Uh, so with that, we are honored tonight to have five folks with us uh, that, that were uh, chosen for awards. Um, what we'll do is hold your applause. Uh, we'll announce the winners, announce the categories, and then what we'll do is have one group photo. Uh, so we'll invite the winners up to stand in front of the dais. Uh, council, you know, stand. Abby will snap a photo. We'll go from there. Does that sound good? Perfect. So uh, the most use of red, red, white, and blue, uh, She-Haw Custom Designs and Sunny Day Market. Best design, or, or I'm sorry, best business was Cabby's Beard Products. Most outstanding youth group uh, was Porter Ridge Athletic Association. Best marching group was Roar Taekwondo. And then the judge's choice was Axe Dudes. Uh, so those are our winners. Uh, several of them are seated behind me, so you are welcome to come up. I have a... Uh, have a nice trophy for you to display uh, on your desk or at your office. Uh, some of you have received multiple of these here, so you keep winning. <laughs> so I truly appreciate everyone. So a round of applause. And winners, if you'd like to come up.
Professor Master Sinandra. Here you are, absolutely. After you guys get your trophies, all of you stand. We're going to stand up. All of us stand up here. And, perfect. And, uh, perfect. Okay. I'm the council. I want all of us to get down there and stand Porter up. Ridge, yeah. I appreciate yeah. all these branded yeah. clothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to stand in that corner back there and take our picture. All Axe, right. dudes. Uh-oh. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully we're, <laughs> we're on the mend. Hey, there we go. Come on up, friends. Would you rather stand back here or stand down here? Which It'd probably be better, wouldn't it? Yeah, you can stay back Okay. That works. Then we can get everybody in. Absolutely. Move something there. Just rotate it. All right. For my second presentation. <laughs> thing to say to you guys it's you guys that make Indian Trail was just what a year or so ago recognized as one of the 15 top cities in the country it's because of people like you that make it make the small town or, or an average sized town and actually Indian Trail I think is the 23rd largest town in North Carolina now it's the largest largest town in Union County so we're growing but it's people like you that make us a great place to live and I want to thank you Absolutely. As a reminder, the Christmas parade registration is already open, so uh, start designing those floats. All right, taking home the hardware. Right, here we go. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, I pull, I'd probably pull you shy every time. Okay. Yeah. And let me see if we can find it, and, okay. and we'll go from there. see you guys. Right. Congratulations. Thanks for coming today, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's go. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Sensei. Thank you, sir. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Kia. Let's go. <laughs> Hayden, you might as well stay there. Uh, anybody else with Park and Rex here? or, did, or? Same left. No? She left. She scooted on out. I'm out of here. She has a drive to Belmont, so I do not. I do not blame her. Not at all. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate you. Thank you. Bird products. Next year we're coming with more There you go. Hey, you can drive one all the way up the stairs and park it right here. conservative twins and line, and they have beard products. They call them bird products. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, next we have a, a proclamation for the Park and Recreation Month. And uh, I'm going to get ready to read this. I just want to, again, thank you for all your hard work and all your department's hard work. And uh, as you know, it's close to my heart what you guys do. And you work very hard. Uh, and you do a wonderful job uh, in everything that you do. You put in a lot of extra hours and uh, you make a lot of people happy. Thank you. So uh, I'd like to read this uh, proclamation. It says, whereas parks and recreation are integral part of the communities throughout this country, including the town of Indian Trail, whereas parks and recreation promotes health and wellness, improving the physical and mental health of people who live near parks, whereas parks and promotes time spent in nature, which positively impacts mental health by increasing cognitive performance and well-being and alleviating illness such as depression, attention deficit orders, and Alzheimer's. Whereas park and recreation encourage physical activities by providing space for popular sports, hiking trails, swimming pools, and many other activities designed to promote active lifestyles. Whereas our parks and recreation is a leading provider of healthy meals, nutrition services, and education, whereas park and recreation programming and educational activities such as out of school time programming, youth sports, environmental education is critical to childhood development. Whereas parks and recreation increases the community economic prosperity through increased property values and expansion of the local tax base, increased tourism, uh, the attract and retention of businesses and crime reduction. 
whereas parks and recreation is essential and adaptable infrastructure that make our communities resilient in the face of natural disasters and climate change. Whereas parks and, and natural recre recreational areas ensure the ecological beauty of our community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and reconnect outdoors. Whereas the U.S. House of Representatives has de de designated uh, July as Parks and Recreation Month and whereas Indian Trail recognizes the benefits derived from parks and recreation resources. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, David Cone, Mayor of Town of Indian Trail, do hereby proclaim the month of July be recognized as Park and Recreation Month in the Town of Indian Trail, dated today's date, the 12th of July, 2022. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And, and and I will say again, you know, we we have a truly amazing team behind us. Um, you know, they're they're vibrant, they're resilient. They they don't say no. We I feel like they they rise to every challenge that, that we throw at them. Uh, and every day they're here to to work to serve our, our community in parks, events, programs, and facilities. So. Um, just some, some brief numbers. Over the last 12 months, uh, we facilitated over 2,000 rentals. So that's tennis courts, ball fields, community rooms. Uh, we saw over 6,000 hours of programming time. So that's everything from three-year-old programs all the way up to our senior programs. Um, you know, and then we hear on a, on a weekly and daily basis that you know, what we're doing is memorable. Uh, it's it's life changing and it's community driven, um, you know, and, and we're here to make that lasting impact. So we we truly appreciate all y'all support. Very good. Hey, now and one other thing, and anybody else that would like to say anything, I'd, I want to appreciate tell the staff that I appreciate what they do. I see all staff that, that not only is with Parks and Recreation, but Indian Trail is a great place to work, and you guys are a great team. And I see not only park and recreation people out there, but I see everybody out there. I see the HR uh, Carrie out there. I see Brandy out there. I see uh, Abby out there, Adam out there, uh, all of you uh, out there working. Captain James, you guys do a wonderful job in, in helping us. Yes, you do. Jim, thank you. I see you out there. So uh, all of you, it, it is a great team, and uh, really I appreciate it. One last thing, I'll uh, try not to be too long-winded, but I remember years ago when we – uh, put a bond referendum up that uh, many people, about 40% of the people did not want to yeah. vote against parks, at about 60-40, not quite 60-40. And I heard all the negatives about what a park, you know. But one thing that, that, that I think you've done is you've changed a lot of minds. I think, uh, I think it would be 80-90% of people have seen what you've done. You've done a ma marvelous, marvelous job. And literally hundreds of thousands of people visit our parks every yes. year, which brings lots of money into our town, lots of money into our restaurants, and there's a lot of good that happens there's, with parks. And I just want to thank you. You do a wonderful, wonderful job. So anybody else like to comment, or, or did I just talk? I think you said Absolutely agree. Great job. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to public comments. These rules were established by the Indian Trail Town Board and apply to public comment participants. As a reminder, they are read at each meeting before public comments are received. The board thanks you for sharing your thoughts and concerns. Please state your name and jurisdiction where you pay taxes clearly for the record. Please elect a representative for multiple individuals having similar messages. Each speaker or representative will have three minutes to state their concerns. Comments should be directed to the entire board and not to this, any specific individuals. Speakers are to remain respectful with reasonable standards of civility. Please remain from communicating grievances regarding town staff in this form. We ask that you redirect those to the town manager. All documents submitted to the town board become town property and may be available as requested. Anonymous general written public comments will not be read. Regarding comments from public hearings, anonymous writings will not be read. All other written public comments will be read for a restricted period of 20 minutes. After 20 minutes remaining, written comments will be noted as either opposing or supporting. Any speaker may be asked 
to discontinue or be disallowed to speak by the board if rules are violated. And last, comments may be recorded and broadcasted on the internet. Okay, that brings us to Sheila Hayes. Sheila, come on up. Not for short people. <laughs> um, I'm Sheila Lynn Hayes. I live on 4917 Pioneer Lane, and I've lived in Indian Trail for 32 years. And I would first like to say I appreciate the town council. I appreciate the elected officials. And um, I know it's a thankless job, but I appreciate what you're doing and what you continue to do for the good of the, the town. Um, like I said, I've lived here 32 years, and I've been involved with the community. It's a great place to live. I love Indian Trail. And um, I've been, a, for the last two years uh, during this pandemic, I've been going from here up to my dad's, which is two hours away, to be to help out as his caregiver. So I'm, I'm really up there more than I am here. But when I come back here, <laughs> I've, I've really been shocked at the growth. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not against it, but all the apartments and the townhouses. And like I said, I know things change. I know they do, but I just get concerned, and I don't, like I said, I've been kind of out of the, haven't been coming to these meetings because I haven't hit it in time when I've been in town, but I just wonder, is there a cap? Are we halfway there, or exactly what's going on with that? And, um, because I feel like the people that live here deserve a quality of life as far as, you know, crowded roads and, you know, schools and things like that, so... I guess I'd like to know what, like I said, is there a cap? Are we halfway there? Are we going to, because it looks like runaway growth to me right now. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, that, uh, that's all for general comments. We, we go now to uh, council feedback. Does anybody like to say anything in return? Tom, we do start and then we'll go down this way. Yes, ma'am. Hi. This thing on? Hello. A, um, I, the majority of this board, if not everyone, um, is for low density. And, um, well, I ran on that. You know, this year we approved 57 homes, um, homes, not apartments or townhomes. Um, those, the properties you see developing now from, are from the past, you know, past council that were approved prior to this, this council. So um, I believe on the website, Brandy, you can go on there and there are all the properties that are being developed are dated, I believe, and when they're anticipating them to start uh, building. And, but I just want you to know this is a low density crowd up here. We're with you, I feel you. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm for low density and I get what you're saying. And I wanna get our infrastructure straight to where we can handle this stuff. So, but I want to let you know that this council did not approve all the ones that are currently flying up. Okay? Thank you. Mr. Barber. Always oh, a pleasure, Ms. Hayes. Mm. The, uh, you give Georgia a high five for me. He doing, I hope he's doing well. Her son's Eagle Scout. So my, her and my son were in scouts together and we, we, we've been at a lot of scout meetings. But the, uh, one of the biggest things being on council that we could do as far as smart growth was to update the town's comprehensive plan and had not been done since 2013 and what we've done is it'll be it's up for approval tonight this has taken two years and some of us have been on council for a while you know in the last two or three years have initiated this but it is the town map and it does, it is conservative. We have done some restrictions as far as high density on things. So the biggest thing and probably the biggest promise kept from one of, one of the things that I ran was smart growth. This was smart and this is what you need to do because this is what your developers and people in the planning department go by and what the council does. A lot of projects never get to the council. They're stopped before in the planning department they, they come to workshops. So there's a long process before it gets to council. But to answer your question where you're saying the growth and all that, nothing we can do about things that are being built, a lot of the things being built now, they were approved before I even got on council. And 
and like the apartments over here on near the railroad tracks, they were approved like eight years ago or so. And so, you know, a lot of things you see, we've had no, I've had no control over. But just to, since you're a friend, I thought I'd spend a little bit more time answering you. And I appreciate you coming up here. And uh, and I wish you and your family the best. And God bless you. Thank you, Miss Hayes. Miss Hayes, um, good to see a neighbor. Uh, unfortunately, over the past two years, we've had a tremendous amount of high density voted into this town. We've had 600 units behind Lowe's voted in, 320 behind uh, the theaters at Sun Valley, and um, and um, we've uh, th this last group that came in voted, or we're voting to keep density down. So um, when you say all these things come up, just know that the three of us that came in here did not vote on those. I just want the town to know that. Thank you. Very good. Anybody else? Good. Ms. Hayes, I'd, I'd like to make a comment on that. I've been up here the longest. I've been up here 10, 11 years. And, uh, you know, the, the apartments by the railroad tracks, I voted against those apartments. There's been numerous apartments that I voted against. There's been numerous apartments I've voted for. Uh, I'd just like to say that in many cases when, when the council is, and I don't think a lot of people quite understand this, and, and, and no offense to it, but but a lot of things come in here and they come as a uh, annexation, uh, and they need and and what that means we just we've approved things that let's say one of my first things that we approved w was right off of Poplin Road and it was a fairly big project. It did, it was actually and there's a lot of donut holes in in uh, uh, Indian Trail. Uh, so it could so when they came and approached the council, they came in with three options. They could go with the county, and this was a big shopping center, apartments, houses. They could go to the county, or it kind of said on the Monroe line too, they could go to Monroe or they could come to Indian Trail. And Indian Trail chose to do it at that time, and this is like many years ago, because of the way they looked at it, the county would 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 have would probably have been more than happy to have it in the county because it's revenue for the county. Uh, so Indian Trail, I think, would do the smart thing and say, well, instead of letting the county have it, we'll get the tax revenue out of it. And that's probably happened uh, a number of times where, where it's been approved. We just, had a, uh, we just had a last meeting, I believe it was, somebody came in and was, was looking to, and, it, it, uh, to, and it, again, it was a donut hole. Uh, the uh, it was in the county, and it was already approved in the county for like 55 homes. And what we did is we approved it for 57 homes, and we annexed it into the town. And the reason we did that is it was going to go up at 55. But if we bring it in at 57, we have a we we can tell them what kind of siding to put on it, what kind of houses they have to build. In other words, we have more control over what we have in our town. So not all, always what you see is what you get. You know, we get criticized a lot for, for, for things coming. But I have, in, in my 11 years, I've never received a dime from a developer. So I don't, I don't, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't behoove me. And I've seen lots of uh, council people, and fortunately there's not a person up here that took a dime from a developer. But in the past, I've seen quite a few uh, council people take money from developers, and I've always thought that was wrong. I always think that this council will always do what's good for the people. The last thing I'd like to say, I've never voted for, and it's not about me, I've never voted for anything that the people were not in favor of. Uh, if, 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 if we had tons of people in here saying they were against it, I would never vote for it because you are the people that, that put us into office. I have to do what you guys want to do, or I think we should do what you want to do. I've never done that, and never will I do that. Uh, so anyway, with that being said, sometimes it's not exactly as it seems. We, we get a lot of criticism for it, uh, for, for doing things, but there's not anybody up here that doesn't do anything that I, in my eyes, that they don't do for the benefit of Indian Trail. So with that being said, I appreciate you coming uh, up here and, and uh, you know, expressing your concerns. And my telephone is always open to you. I'd love to talk to you. And if you ever have a question why, please call me or please call any of these council people because, you know, they, they need to answer. They need to answer to their constituents. So thank you for coming tonight. Appreciate it.
That brings us to the law enforcement. Captain James. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, the, uh, you've got your packets there in front of you that I left for you, um, referring to the month of June. Uh, 247 total reportables uh, instances that we took last month. Uh, a couple of those, and the reason for that rise was for a couple of little sp spree rashes of car break-ins and some larcenies. But I'm glad to stand here before you and say that all of those were solved within 48 hours of them actually happening in these neighborhoods. Um, uh, 409 business checks, 3,531 preventative patrols. Um, on the traffic side, we had 117 total crashes with 18 reported injuries, which is down from May. And we're starting that trend back down, which is I, I credit to my guys for doing the enforcement, working these intersections where we're having these high crashes. Um, so they're, re they're really doing a good job. Uh, and then 6,092 calls, total calls for service in the town of Indian Trail last month. A um, couple things I would like to point out to you. We started our three new positions uh, July 1st. Um, it's kind of funny, but I'm going you know, to spin it back around at the end of the story. But um, our new crash investigator that we assigned to community resources had several people put in for that position wanting to come back to Indian Trail. And I said, come back to Indian Trail. Um, our guy that actually got it started his career in Indian Trail as a patrol officer. Uh, he left here and went to the SAFE unit, uh, which is our DWI enforcement unit. Um, spent two years over there and was over the moon uh, to be assigned this new position. So he's come back to Indian Trail, and which the only thing I get, can get out of him is his big grin and thank you for bringing me back home. Um, but he started and is doing very well. Uh, Tyler Leonard. Uh, is our new detective that was assigned to work with the wrong amount of Calvo over here. Mr. Leonard started his career in Indian Trail as a patrol officer. Um, and same thing, he was standing in line when they opened that slot up and wanted to know if he could come back to Indian Trail as a new detective up here. So all uh, three or both of those have started. But then it's easy to say two, but three, Chris McTeague. Chris has been on the sheriff's office a long time. He's been a crime scene investigator for a long, long time. He actually left CMPD. He's been with us probably 15, 16 years now and had some time with CMPD before he came to us as a crime scene investigator. Very well educated, very smart, and a very hard worker. Uh, Chris was assigned, when I was over investigations back several, several years ago, and we first had that part-time crime scene officer up here, Chris was that guy over on Navajo, in that office on Navajo Trail. Um, he was knocking on my door when that position was announced. I don't know if he'd come back to any trail. So all, all three of those folks have moved into their offices over here um, on Black Drive, and they are more than tickled and have already proven their, their wealth so far. But the, um, my plan is, is to bring all three of those in here probably the next meeting or meeting after to introduce you to them um, just to make sure that you know who they are. But the, that's all I have for you tonight. I'm glad answering questions if you got any. Anybody with any questions? Mr. Barber. I just want to say, between July 4th, we set a huge festival. I just give my echo what Mr. Kramer said. I mean, I felt safe, did good. I mean, things can go bad quick, but at the festival and the parade both, is, there was officers everywhere, and it seemed well covered, well organized. So I just want to say, great job. Well, that was, that was, that was a handshake between Hayden's staff and my staff, and they worked seamlessly on it. and. Uh, pulled off another very successful event. Um, mayor referred to something a while ago about hundreds of thousands of people referring, you know, coming to the parks every year. I think over half of those came in one day. That fun day. <laughs> but the uh, <laughs> yeah, I saw you had a new deputy out there on the festival, Deputy Dees. I'd like to recognize. Her. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. She picked me up in a lot. And yeah. Dropped me off. Had her little plastic sticker and all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say, I think y'all do a great job. Um, I, every year, organize an Adopt-A-Cop event, which you're mm -hmm. aware of, and I think within two or three hours, the community adopted out all the, all the officers in Indian Trail, uh, um, no. as well as asking for more, as you know. So we appreciate everything you do, and our community appreciates everything y'all do. Well, I've stood here, up here before you, you know, and told you, I, I can't express my love for this community, and I'm not from here and being accepted like I was when I did come up here. 
um, but it, it overwhelms me. It, my door is, you know, watch, looking up on the camera and seeing somebody coming in with both hands full of cookies or cakes or uh, all kinds of stuff. And it's, and it's not just every once in a while. It's not back to Blue Week. It's not, you know, support law enforcement. It's every day. And that speaks volumes about this community and, um, and about the people who represent it. I think that since you've been here, I've seen a tremendous in, uh, difference in the attitude of your group there. I mean, they seem to be um, uh, just very um, polite, very uh, respectful, uh, and very informative in what they, you know, what they do when they're dealing with the public. So uh, you've done a great job. Well, I, I appreciate really you appreciate saying it. that. It's them. Thank it's you. not me. I'm, I'm, yeah. getting, I'm getting good people. I'm really good people. So, and I hope a lot of them will stay for a long time. Captain James, thank you. Thank we you. Appreciate you being a big part of the team. You're a big part of it. So, okay, that brings us to the consent agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Buhollock's made a motion. All in favor? Unanimous. There's no public hearings tonight. Brings us to old business. ARPA update. Mr. McLam. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. Um, this comment is as much to myself as it is to y'all. We're going to go through a lot of information. I'm going to try and make it as acceptable or as a way that we can understand what we're going to go through. Take a deep breath. If you've got any questions, ask me. We'll answer them. So, and I'm going to actually shuffle some papers tonight, too, as I'm trying to talk. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through a couple of things here on the screen. This is just to show you kind of what we're going to step through as we go through this. A reminder of what ARPA funds originally came out for. They were for funds to be expended to improve and or support the community as it re uh, relates to the virus impacts of COVID. So that's the reason why the federal government sent those dollars down. If you remember, we talked uh, six months ago or so, we talked actually about these five buckets and what these buckets are and how the funds could or could not go in each one of those buckets. We also then talked about um, kind of some steps and a process that we thought we were going to go through. And I say thought we were going to go through because I was a little naive and y'all can't see this, but kind of from community engagement up through uh, funding of projects is roughly where we are at right now. I naively thought we would walk up these steps till we got to the end of the process. Now we've walked up them, we've come back down them, and we're going back up them again, and we're probably going to do that until 2026. So, but we'll get to the end of this whole thing. So now we're going to talk about the funds and how they relate to how they kind of got broken out and where we've gone with that. So if you remember, we got $12.7 million. $10 million of those we were allowed to take through a revenue uh, replacement loss category. And the other one um, that we are allowed to expend funds in per North Carolina general statutes and ARPA funds is that infrastructure premium pay. Those are the other two buckets that we can. If you remember, we talked early on the public health and the economic impact. Those are more of county level functions. They're not as much of a municipal level function in North Carolina. So uh, we have received our first payment August uh, 20th of 2021. We are being told that the second payments are headed this direction uh, within the next couple of weeks. Um, and we are expecting full payment of those, not a portion payment of those. Because remember early on we had talked about we didn't know if they were going to be doing that. Um, any funds can be expended on something that a cost was incurred after August 3rd of 2021 through uh, they have to be allocated by December 30th of 2024. Um, 
A couple of things that we did do, or y'all did do as a council, y'all claimed that $10 million revenue loss. That was a very good thing by delaying kind of seeming like we were delaying a process we actually waited out till the final ruling came out that then allowed us to be able to pull that full 10 million um, we are using that 10 million to pay for the sheriff's office contract for the next and i say two and a half years just based off of how much it costs it's not going to cover that full third year um, and we've used two million dollars for the first avenue stormwater project which todd and them are working on right now which leaves in that original pot of those two buckets uh, about $700,000 left that can either be used in infrastructure or premium pay. So now we get to the fun stuff. Now we get to the things that council actually uh, move some projects forward and where we're gonna need to talk about moving some projects forward as we go even further. So because we paid for the sheriff's office with that, which was an allowable use with the replacement loss revenue dollars, you now have surplus dollars of town dollars to that amount of $10 million. Those funds are broken down because you have to remember, we own, the dollars are only surplus once they're available after the sheriff's office contract has been paid for that year. So this is how that breakdown is for this year. Y'all know the contract was rough, a little over uh, 3.7 million. Just using a 5% escalating clause, I don't know what it'll be, I'm just guessing. 5% gets you to roughly $4 million next year. And that would only leave out of 10 million, 2.3 for the following, for that third year. Now we're going to talk about council priorities, uh, public comment, because we just did through that period, and staff comment. So uh, council priorities, so for the FY22 budget and the FY23 budget, uh, these are the priorities that uh, council put forward within their budget process. I don't need to read all of them. You can see what they are. Um, they are not in any particular order. That's not just for y'all. Y'all know that, but that's more for the public. Those are just what those priorities were. Out of those priorities, council uh, looked to fund a couple of projects. Um, sorry. Can we do these out of order? Can they do the consent, uh, the motions? Can they approve the motions that are D and E now on there as we go through this, or do we need to wait till we get to D and E? Wait, okay, all right. So there's some stuff up here that I'm taking a liberty of putting up here, and if you don't approve it, then it would change some of the numbers that are up here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the fire trucks. So we are ready to purchase those or to put in a purchase request for those tomorrow. Uh, we do have, and y'all received a draft copy of one of the agreements earlier today. After the uh, contract is paid for the sheriff's office, we will then be able to expend those funds to purchase the trucks tomorrow, roughly. Um, the VFW, we they have a draft agreement in hand right now. We are waiting on them to approve that agreement internally. They'll bring it back to us. We hope to bring it back to y'all in August for approval in August of that agreement. Uh, the water lines, uh, the county has put a project manager in charge of that project. We are just trying to set up a time that we can meet with them and start moving that project forward. The next three projects that you'll see there are projects that were um, brought to us by outside agencies during the original kind of call for projects that was not done uh, as an official call, but the public knew that we had funds and we were looking for projects to, to administer. These are three that actually do meet all of the criteria that we need by general statutes. So that's uh, Food for Families. Uh, most of y'all know who they are. Uh, Common Heart, most of y'all know who they are as well. Um, and then Cameron's House of Hope is one that you may or may not know about. They are a new relatively new organization here in town. Um, and they deal with 
children, I believe, between the age of 5 and 12, don't quote me on those ages, of parents that are addicts and addicted, and they help those kids to be able to have somewhere to go to be able to do their homework, to be able to get clothes, to be able to have a place that they feel secure at. All of those items, if they are approved um, D&E here in just a minute, total up to $5.5 million. Also note that the two athletic associations were helped, uh, Indian Trail and Porter Ridge, but that was done with FY22 dollars. It was not done with surplus uh, $10 million. So then we went out for public comment. When we went out for public comment, these are generally some of the things that uh, got heard through the public comment process. If you remember, we've said this a couple of times, we ended up with about 460 or so uh, comments from the public. We also sent out a staff survey after council requested that, and we got about 18 requests back from staff or surveys that were completed by staff. Um, just really quick, I want to read a couple of the comments. I'm not going to read entireties of comments because there were quite a few, but I do want you just to kind of understand these are not ranked in any order. Again, they are just comments in general. So um, some of the ones from the staff side, uh, the town should focus on anything transportation related. Transportation includes sidewalks, NCDOT maintain roads, town maintain roads, greenways. Uh, building more connectivity includes greenways and sidewalks, roadway maintenance. And again, I am just reading like not word for word verbatim. Uh, it would be great to see, sorry, it would be great to have a large scale project that could benefit the entire town for generations to come. A town, a town community center, a new park, Additional staff would need to be provided for these services. Community center would be great. I said I was going to shuffle papers, and this is why. So some comments from the public were additional sidewalk and that connects to homes, schools, public buildings, places of worship, and work. Fix the potholes. With all the residential development, maintaining and expanding green space should be a high priority. Roadway maintenance. Please, roadway maintenance. Uh, police and first responders would be great. Police department, increase the staff service for s senior citizens. Almost done. Infrastructure. County water on our own or in our neighborhood parks please improve and grow our parks sidewalks throughout the town and they go on and on and on so this is the comment list from public and the other ones here somewhere it's not quite as big but the good thing about all of those comments and about y'all's priorities is if you look at that the ones that are in red or sorry the ones that have the green circles around them actually match up from public comment, staff comment, and council priorities. So you can see that whether it's staff, whether it's council, or whether it's the public, everybody's wanting the same general things. Also, just quickly to note, before going out to public comment, council made some decisions and went forward on some projects. The ones that are in gold, our projects that were done through surplus dollars and the ones that have the white circles around it were done through ARPA dollars. So the public safety one, that's paying the sheriff's office contract, that's also fire trucks, two different things. Stormwater, First Avenue Stormwater Project, partnerships with the agencies and with the VFW and all those things. So I'm trying to paint the picture to understand that what we've, what y'all have done has been able to meet some of the priorities, both of your own and what the public has been saying. We are still waiting on a couple of agencies to get back to us. You can see the list there. Um, a couple of those I do have, or uh, Mike or the committee does have meetings scheduled with, and we hope to have some information back from those agencies in the not too distant future. 
all of what we've talked about now gets us to what's down here at the bottom of this page, and that's year one, two, and three. So because remember those dollars are only available once we pay the sheriff's office contract. For this year, still left, there's about 410,000. Rolling into year two, there would be about one point, round up, 1.8 million. And year three, about 1.7 million. Please, at this point, don't hold me to the dollar figures that are there. Things are gonna be fluid. We actually, uh, Jim brought up today in our meeting that we're actually starting to get um, some interest income earned off of some of this. So we're actually, that's money that can be spent as well. So we're starting to earn some interest even off of the money that's sitting in the bank. Um, sorry, I need to look at my notes for a second. <laughs> So you can see here, um, as we're going forward in a couple of recommendations, tying back to those uh, priorities from council and from the public and staff, these would be a couple of the recommendations coming out of the ARPA committee. And that would be for year one, uh, to, from, to focus on transportation and parks going, you know, with that 410 that's kind of left. Year two, you kind of look at, kind of broadly again, we can go back and look at civic partnerships, we can look at transportation and parks, and the same thing in year three. We're a long way out from year three. These priorities may change before we get to that point, but we all have that ability to be able to do. This is just kind of a general guideline to maybe continue to follow right now. Lastly, a couple of next steps where we're gonna be at. So, Tonight, we've made a couple of recommendations. If y'all want to think about those for, the, I would say, two weeks, but for the next month, we'll come back at the next meeting kind of looking for a little bit more. Let's continue to head in the direction of what we're saying right now. Um, as a ARPA committee and as other staff, we'll continue to oversee the program. Um, staff will continue to bring projects to council that are eligible projects for approval. And one final recommendation would be during next year's budget cycle for those civic partnership projects to actually have a call for projects, give a three-month window, give a four-month window where those organizations ask for those funds. And then we know those funds going into the budget process rather than what we've been doing now, which is kind of hit and fall into place where we can kind of try and, fall to, and make those work. And that is, I believe everything and now I will answer questions anybody have any questions oh come on I know I didn't do that well <laughs> I mean, yeah, well I, I think we've been over it so many times I think I think uh, and you did an outstanding job but one thing I'll, I have a question for you sure if, if you would who, tell us who's all I think we know most everybody on the ARPA committee who yep who so who? internal on the ARPA committee we have Jim we have Alicia Massey, we have Alicia Gaddy, myself, Todd, and Mike. We are all on the committee. So we meet weekly right now on Tuesdays. That's what we've been trying to do to try and get through all this. I will say this is a lot of work. Uh, Jim actually brought up today that his hometown um, in Poughkeepsie actually went out and hired an outside consultant to oversee their ARPA stuff. They are not doing it internally. So they are paying an outside consultant to do that. A lot of municipalities I'm seeing right now through school um, are going out for grant project managers just to run this project as a grant because it's so much funding and it's, it's just very time consuming. Good yes, job. sir. Um. You've got the money spread over three years, correct? Yes. So if we want to spend more, we would have to amend the budget? <clears throat> or, I mean, you know, it's, why is it spread over three years? So it's the $10 million of surplus dollars is spread over three years because it's only available when we pay the sheriff's office contract for that year. Right. So I'm trying to back up. So there's $10 million total that we were a lot that we could a lot in that fund well then that 10 million sitting there and we can only spend that on allowable arpa uses well an allowable arpa use is law enforcement so we're using that to pay for law enforcement so every year that we pay that contract you have that amount of money freed up to spend 
So this year that was about 3.7 for 2.3. Well, I understand that part of it, but my question is, is we spend more than, I mean, we got the 6 million over here, we're using it for the sheriff. I understand that's graduated over a period of years, but we still got $30 million in the general fund. So we could spend all the money in one year. We're just dipping into the general fund as long as we don't exceed the amount that we got in the surplus, we could do it that way too, correct? I mean, he's, he's not in his head, just so you'll know. <laughs> well, I was going to say, in, in theory, yes, you could. Okay. The, the, what is going to happen, what you're going to have to fight very hard not to do is ARPA dollars were not allowed to basically add money to your fund balance or to be able to lower taxes. Those were some, those were things that were said you cannot do that came out in the regulations. So it's going to be a very delicate balance if you're overspending, even though we have money in our, you know, to be able to do it, it's going to be a delicate balance to be able to show that to the auditor that you ultimately spent all 10 million of your surplus dollars. Well, that's why I asked because, you know, was there's, like you said, there's direct, direct and indirect spending rules, yeah. which is different than the money we got a year or two ago. Right. COVID. So I understand, yeah, that's kind of where I was going is, you know, was, you know, where we, I guess we're bound by what you call indirect. Correct. Rules. Okay. You yeah. answer my question. Thank okay. You. Yeah. Um, Adam, from my understanding, when this all began, uh, when I started with it or whatever, I caught up or what have you, I thought that um, by designating that money to pay the sheriff's contract that ultimately freed up the money uh, that we would have spent out of our general fund say and so i don't understand why there's uh is there does that fall under indirect because that money we um were given by the government we spent it on the sheriff's office now that was allowed mm -hmm. by arpa regulation or what have you um so that $10 million per se that we were going to pay the sheriff. Um, now that money's free. We're not paying it out of our general fund any longer. So why is there a hold for one, two, and three? Yep. Does that make sense? Yep. So you're, while you do have the $10 million, you aren't expending all those funds. You're only spending 3.7 million. Year one, you only spent 3.7 million. So that's all you actually freed up out of your general fund I dollars. Okay. okay, I get it. Now, you could choose another use that's an allowable ARPA use if you wanted to start freeing up even more dollars. But then we're going to get into sub-agreements, and we're going to get, I mean, it gets really comp. And then we might we, need that out. Then we would need the, yes. <laughs> so if we stick to what we've been, the path we've been down and the path we've followed for the past year, heavily for the last six months we're gonna get to a point that we can do everything that the council has laid out before us that the public put through through public comments and then staff as well i will say that we um trying to the fire trucks uh one thing with those is is when we enter into those agreements um for purchase we're spreading, so we're going to go through two fiscal years when we do the, the purchase of the trucks. So we'll be able to purchase, we'll write, like, we have to put a 50% down payment. We'll be able to do that. And then in the next fiscal year, we'll be able to pay the other 50%. So we'll be fine with our allotment for what we've paid for the sheriff's office to still have funds to be able to do those. Got it. Thank you, sir. That's a finance process. I have one comment is... Uh funny how he talked about the parks and how the public loves the parks and then your survey backed up exactly what you <laughs> said I just wanted to part that out that you know and you know when I campaign went out there and when you talk to people is they love the parks I mean it's 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 really I think just backed up what you said and it was interesting to see that right after you said it so I just wanted to point that out I, I, I you know that was pretty cool I thought thank you mr. I, out of five items uh, that were kind of ranked um, both in the public and on the staff side, uh, roads and parks rank number one on both one and two on both sides. So, yes. Adam, thank you for uh, for that presentation, yeah. and thank you to everybody. Uh, 
they everybody it, it is definitely a team effort i'm just the mouthpiece that stands up here i, I agree and and you do a good job being the mouthpiece and uh, uh mike good job uh getting this team together and and the they, team they did it todd all of you uh everybody but todd. <laughs> and uh jim i know you're a big part of it uh so thank you all of you for what you do M mr mayor one comment if i might sure if we look at projects replacement revenue aside put that over here you also have in your budget available fund balance which is separate and apart so if you do see something typically a capital project you know that's an opportunity for you too very good okay that brings us uh you want a break okay let's take a five minute break so this dece and the uh, comprehensive land plan adoption. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I do want to comment Ms. Hayes. Uh, her timing is fabulous uh, as her concerns are met within this 2041 comprehensive plan. And you can see from the map, and we've discussed previously, the conservative scenario, scenario two was chosen. All of these blue areas is where you see less intense use or lower density. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them for you, but we're excited to be at the finish line. Barbara? 286 pages, Miss Hayes, if you want to read it. <laughs> I'll give you a copy. <laughs> I, got, I, I think it's fine. I'm good, so. Mm. Anybody have any questions mm -hmm. on it? Uh, Brandy, it's an exceptional job. It, it is conservative, and, and uh, we appreciate, uh, you know, what, what you do and what it, us working together, and uh, you've done a, a marvelous, marvelous job. Uh, with that being said, if no questions, can I, can I get a motion uh, to adopt the comprehensive? Well, do I, need to, I need to read that, don't I? Uh, please follow the motion sheet. Beg your pardon? The motion sheet. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, somebody somebody give me a motion. Uh, make a motion, please. Okay, good. I make a motion to approve resolution number 1712-2022 regarding adoption of the updated comprehensive land use plan. Mr. Behalik has made a motion. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, you're still up, Miss Brandy. Go right ahead. Just quickly, we do need to officially disband the Comprehensive Plan Advisory Committee. We want to thank all of the committee members for their time um, and volunteering, but they are uh, no longer needed as we've completed the project. Can I get a motion? I'll make the motion to disband the Comprehensive Land Use Plan Advisory Board effective immediately. Okay, Mr. Amberg, he's made a motion. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Brandy. Come on back up here, Adam. Come back. I won't break the rules this time. <laughs> so as we just went through that presentation, uh, one of the items on there was uh, the fire trucks. Um, so in the past, y'all have made a couple of motions to keep us walking down this process. As we need to write a purchase order tomorrow, we would like to ask for official authorization to spend... Uh, I like Those to make funds. the motion. Any, other, I think any there, questions on that? I think there's a motion on that motion sheet. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll make the motion. Any, any questions first? My, no questions? No okay, questions? go ahead. Yeah, um, to approve purchase of three fire trucks committed by the Indian Trail Council on April 12, 2020 not to exceed 4.5 million in total to be leased under future agreements to the fire departments of Baker, Stallings, and Henry Bridge that partner with Indian Trail and serving the Indian Trail residents. Mr. Amberge has made a motion. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, Adam, you're still up. I'm still up here. So the next one that we have is for those three organizations. If you remember when we were doing that presentation, these were ones that had come to us. So um, the, what we're going to ask for is an amount not to exceed uh, due to just as we go to try and purchase these items that they've requested and we try and work through this process, it could take a little bit of time and 
we all know things are starting to cost more right now, so we just want a little bit of flexibility as we move through this. So Common Heart, a couple of the type items that they requested uh, was a refrigerating truck, uh, walk-in freezer, walk-in cooler, um, and some commercial uh, freezers for smaller, you know, more type residential type freezers. Uh, food for families, uh, ask for food. Uh, again, a refrigerating truck. Um, and then a refrigerating and freezer expansion of what they have today. And then Cameron's House of Hope asked for clothing, uh, an upfit to a closet that they have, some play equipment, some outdoor equipment, um, a passenger van, and then just some other items for their office. Okay. All of these would be items that we are going to purchase to follow general statutes. We're going to purchase them and then surplus them back out to these agencies. You done? I am done. And Mr. Barber? Can you give us a breakdown of what each one's getting, or do you know what they all kind of subjective right So I, I can give you round numbers, but my round numbers won't add up to 700,000. So right now, Common Heart, we're at about 165,000. Uh, food for Families is about 310,000. And Cameron's House of Hope is about 200000 And that's where the extra on top of that is like for us to be able to move around a little bit so we don't have to come back to you if something's a little bit more. Um, same thing with the fire trucks. We're actually under that 4.5 number, but that's why it's a not to exceed. I, I have a question. So do you know what kind I mean, obviously, you've looked at it or, or priced certain things out, like the, the, these refrigerated trucks, because mm -hmm. when you say a refrigerated truck, it could be a big truck or it could be a small truck. Um, yeah, so we're looking at um, 5,500, uh, like Dodge 5,500 type trucks, you know, Ford 4,500, those, those size trucks within a box on the back that's a refrigerating. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. Those are what those agencies use to go pick up food. They drive those to the coast to pick up food. They drive them up to Charlotte to pick up food from um, the food bank, the larger food banks and different things in Charlotte. And then they bring that food back to be served locally. Okay. Did, did, any other questions? Do, uh, do, we, do we want to put a motion? Do, do we want to make a motion for this? There is a motion okay. on here. All right. Yep. Somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the purchase and of assets and distributable goods with town surplus funds, which resulted from ARPA monies, that will be donated to Common Heart, Food for Families, and Cameron's House of Hope per NCGS, and the total combined amount not to exceed 700000 700, which we, will be allocated to these agencies at the town manager's discretion. Okay, Mr. Buholic's made a motion. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll let them know tomorrow. That brings us to new business, bilingual pay policy. Ms. Warner. All right. I'm sorry that I'm always up here with boring policies to present to you guys. I, I don't know how to make it fun. So um, anyway, um, I do want to say congrats to Brandy and her team and to all of you because that was a huge accomplishment with that comp plan. So, and I also want to give a shout out to Hayden and his team. They always really do a great job, just like you said, David. It's, it's amazing. Um, and I worked Family Fun Day this year, and it was so much fun just seeing everybody work together, um, whether it was town staff and just vendors, and the, the church was great. I don't remember which church it was, but it was awesome. But anyway, um, what I'm here tonight is to present to you a new personnel policy recommendation for bilingual pay. Um, we currently don't have a policy for that, and we have a need for it. We have some staff members that are bilingual, and um, I think it's a great incentive for them. Um, it's a great skill set that they bring to the town. Um, it's an asset for us. Um, and we are noticing that um, one or two of our employees are uh, really utilizing um, their Spanish-speaking skills um, more than they have in the past. So I think now's a good time to um, present this policy to you. I hope you had a chance to read it. <laughs> um, I don't have a slide up here, but basically what I'm proposing is um, $40 monthly stipend, um, so it's $480 a year. Obviously, if we see an increase um, in you know any kind of foreign language, 
then um, we could come back and, and increase that um, as needed. But right now, I think twenty to forty dollars a month is is um, what is recommended. I did speak with the North Carolina League of Municipalities. Um, a lot of the a lot of municipalities do this. Um, our Spanish speaking community is not um, as large as the city of Charlotte. Um, so their stipend is a little bit larger than what we're offering or presenting right now. Um, but that's mainly what it is. There is a proficiency test that um, employees will have to take and pass to be eligible for this stipend. Um, and I just ask if you can adopt it tonight. Um, we'll do this going forward. And if you have any questions, I'm available. Go right ahead. Konnichiwa. Does that qualify me? <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to take the test. Um, you know, it's I not an ja easy I test. I a Japanese wife, and you know, I, I know all five <laughs> Japanese people here in town. So, <laughs> the, uh, but anyway, um, the, I guess if you had five people, we're looking at like 2,400. Is this already budgeted, or do we need to amend the budget, or is it already covered? It, it, it's not five people. It's it's more like one or two. Well, I just was guessing. Oh, okay. Right. All right. I thought you. The question is. is we're okay on budgeting with this. We're, no, we're okay on budgeting. Yes. Within the budget. Okay, that's all. That's really all I have. All right. I, I wouldn't pass the Japanese test. I see you're going to test people. Spanish speaking people come in, but we've also got others come in, like Russians. Yep. Surprised how many Russian folks are here now. So, yeah. Yeah, it's for any foreign language. Okay. So. Well, what we're learning is that, um, and Brandy can speak to this as well, but um, we do have a new employee, Josue. I don't know if you had a chance to meet him, but um, he's fluent in Spanish, and um, a lot of the Spanish community will ask for him um, just because they're more comfortable um, speaking their native language. And, um, you know, I think as word gets out a little bit more, then, you know, they'll be educated a little bit better as well about planning stuff because um, some of that stuff is hard. <laughs> Um, so. Very good. Can uh, you, you yeah, talk yeah, about that? Let's just kind of piggyback off that as uh, the, uh, so this would probably be more cost effective than if we were to go out and then start requiring bilingual as part of a job description. You would think, I mean, I would think so. We I mean, prefer it. Seen, yeah, we prefer it. We put it in our job descriptions for certain positions, um, but, um, you know, it's, it's not I, you know, hard to find. dollars I mean, I've seen where my wife's work and all that when they get bilingual people there's usually a pretty up in pay yep. so I, I think this would be cost savings I mean do you think that yeah okay so that's good. and good. I mean I'm I'm recommending 20 or 40 dollars a month but if you guys want to go higher <laughs> <laughs> with that being said no other questions can I get a motion please I'll make the motion to approve deny the bilingual pay policy I approve it, yeah. Yeah, well, okay. absolutely. Mr. Mr. Amberg, you uh, made a motion. All in favor? I didn't. Crystal, you got your hand up? Yeah, okay. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, that's unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's approved tonight? All right. The next is how, excuse me, Hauser family donation. Perfect. Thank you, Council. Uh, briefly, just take you back a, a little journey uh, back to uh, February of 2020. Um, some of you were on Council, if you remember, the Hauser family came in and requested uh, placing two signs at Chestnut Square Park. Uh, the Hauser family owned the property where we sit now, as well as the, the park across the street. Um, at the time, it wasn't approved, it wasn't denied. Council said, you know, it would be really great if we could come up with a policy that then when a similar request came through, 
uh, we would step through those processes. Um, so essentially staff came back um, and then uh, when the park and rec policy was adopted, it essentially spelled out that any request for a donation uh, would come through the park and rec committee, it would be heard by the committee and then recommended. Uh, so similar to planning board where it's you know a recommendation uh, and then the ultimate decision is up to council. So that's what happened back in June. The Hauser family came in. They reckon, uh, they presented to the to the committee uh, to place two signs at Chestnut Square Park uh, near the trailhead uh, of the playground. Uh, the signs would be paid for. Installation would be paid for by the Hauser family. Uh, once installed, then it becomes the property of the town. Meaning, if we wanted to move the sign, if we wanted to, you know, do whatever we need to do, it does not require permission from the Hauser family, which they're aware of. Uh, in your packet, there were uh, a, a depiction of the signs. Uh, again, these aren't, you know, hand drawn. These are professionally done. They are professionally printed. They're professionally installed. Uh, and then the following uh, page showed kind of the again the general location of the trailhead. Uh, so what I'm asking you this evening uh, is either the approval or denial of the signage request by the Hauser family. Any questions? Okay. Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the Hauser family sign donation to be placed within the town parks. Okay. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Barber, for making that motion. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. There's no discussion items. Let's get up to the manager's update. Okay, what I'd like to do is uh, you have a memo on an update of town projects. As you can see, we're continuing to make great progress on the things that are important to the town. And I want to commend this board on its leadership for doing that. Uh, earlier this week, I think we sent you a big old spreadsheet with like 30-something projects. Uh, I will not go through my memo unless you want me to, but we'll, we're continuing to do a lot of stuff behind the scenes, and we're on schedule with a lot of it. Um, the other thing I want to mention to you is we're going to try something new this year with Christmas. Traditionally, what we've done is the parade route has started at the post office and ended at the park. Well, this year, we want to try the traditional route, much like you saw for the 4th of July, and it will go along. You've got two churches there, and so we want to... We want to do that this year, and we also want to have the tree lighting on Sunday. Um, excuse me, have the parade on Sunday, December 4th at 4 p.m. And as you've heard Hayden say tonight, that we have opened up entries for those that might want to ride on the, you know, be in the parade. You will get a separate email from Hayden, if not, uh, you should get it by tomorrow, letting, asking if you want to be in the parade let us know, and if you want to have your friends and family on the float, let us know because there's a certain number of people that can be on a float, so we'll be working on that. Spoke to the mayor earlier uh, this week, and I think he's going to ride in a, a Jeep provided by Capital Jeep. Is that right, Mr. That's mayor? That's what he said. That, that, we'll see. So we're, we're looking forward to that. Uh, we will have the tree lighting on Friday December 2nd from 6 to 9, we're planning a lot of activities there, so we're giving you a twofer. If you can't make the parade, you can make the tree lighting, or if you can't make the tree lighting, you can make the parade. But hopefully you can make both of them, and we're looking forward to, to this new arrangement, and um, it will be here before we know it. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to have a, another couple moments just to kind of praise the staff tonight, because what you saw... Uh, throughout this meeting is the fine work that the staff does, and I'm just fortunate enough to be a manager of these talented people. I was at Family Fun Day. I was at the Fourth of July Parade, and you're right. It went off without a hitch, and from the work that, the, that we're doing with the sheriff's office and the leadership that y'all provide, uh, we are you know have a formula for success. I'm very excited about where we're going as a town and the projects that we have on board. And as I went back through the list the other day and just looked at what we've accomplished, it's been nothing short of amazing. You know, we have a, a new mayor, new council members, and so uh, last year was very successful, and this coming year will be even more so. 
and so we certainly thank you. Mike, thank you. Good job. Uh, yeah, got a question here, Mr. Barber? Yes, sir. I raised my hand. I thank you. Mm, the, uh, uh, one of the projects, you know, since you brought up projects, was the uh, storytelling at the park. Mm -hmm. Or, and maybe Mr. Kramer can answer this, are you, are we getting the stories from the library, or are you taking donations of books, or, and I understand they're, they're going to have Braille on these? Yeah. Let's, yeah, let uh, Haven come up and he can talk about that, Mr. Mayor, Mayor just Pro Tem. Quick question, you know, just if they were taking donations of the books or if they're getting them from the library or. Um, so, yes to both. Um, so, we are partnered with the Union County Library. They, they source the book, meaning they, they are in the know uh, for popular children's books a little more than I am. Uh, so, they're the ones coming up with recommendations. Uh, when it comes to book donations, each one of our parks has a, lending, a little free lending library. Um, so, yes, if you have extra books, it's kind of like the take a penny, leave a penny that you used to see at the old stores, you know, so you can put donations of books out of the park anytime you so choose. Uh, then, yes, we will have Braille out there. Uh, it's a little expensive to do a story. Um, so October is Nationally Visually Impaired Month. Um, so that's something that we will do annually uh, as well. If we're able to find a sponsor or if we're able to find a more cost-effective means to print the Braille, uh, that may be something that we're, we're able to increase. Thank you. Absolutely. Another reason that our parks, and you do a good job. Um, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mike, for your uh, update there. Good job. Uh, I'd like to thank Mike. I'd like to thank you. I think you're doing an excellent job as a town manager, and especially like uh, the update that you're coming out with to let us know about the projects and their status, because in a lot of cases we, you know, we come to the meeting once or twice a month, and you know, we'll discuss something, but then once it's uh, it, it's off the, the table, then there, sometimes we wonder what's going on with it. And so it's very helpful that you're uh, keeping us updated on, on uh, you know, what the activities and progress on things that we're, that we're doing. So thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. That brings us to council member comments, and we're ha we have the pro at that tonight. We're most happy that you're here with us. She tonight. forgot about and, it, didn't and, uh, <laughs> So, let Perfect. Just want to thank everyone for coming out. Um, we have almost a month before our next meeting, so I um, want to thank every, all the staff for everything they're doing. And an event that's coming up that's really important to me, I guess, is our national night out on August 2nd from 6 to 9 at one of our wonderful parks at Chestnut Square Park. Um, and we'll have the adopt a cop table set up there, but it's definitely a really cool um, event to bring kids to, the whole family to. Um, it just kind of bridges the relationship between our community and our officers. So I would love to see everybody out there. I'll definitely be out there, so come see us. Mr. Ambergy. So you're drawing them out of your head. I, I wrote it down, I wrote it down, <laughs> randomly. Now I just want to recognize Brandy. Her birthday was this past week, and uh, She's uh, close and inching to 40, folks. Um, and also, um, I got a little bilingual in me also. Nanun Tongshinul Salang Hamida. That is, uh, I love you in Korean. Tonggu uh, is the language. But I spent 13 months over there. So anyways, I learned a little bit. Um, but God bless everyone. Have a good week. Or have a good month. And it was great having you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. It's been great to see everybody. See you. Uh, Mr. Gay. I'd like to thank everybody for their uh, participation and help in the parade. Unfortunately, I was under the weather and couldn't make it, but um, uh, the history of the parade is that the, the Indian Trail Alliance Club originally sponsored it and, and always maintained the uh, organization and setup of it. And uh, uh, as usual, I think they did an excellent job. Um, Wayne Courtney and Bob Flippin came out Saturday and, and lined off where all the floats were going to be, and I'm sure it was uh, probably a kind of a hot day for them to be out there doing it. And then, President Wayne Courtney did an excellent job of uh, directing the folks out onto the, the main parade route. So I uh, want to just uh, thank them for what they, what all they've done. Hope everybody has a great July in the next month, and we'll see you at the next meeting. Thank you. Mr. Barber. 
wish Mr. Amberg your coming up birthday. <sighs> Happy birthday. And um, the uh, also was uh, really excited and thank you for the planning department, Ms. Deese, and all that on this. We got a comprehensive plan and it's great, wonderful, and thanks everybody a part of that. Uh, I was here when we nominated the comprehensive plan committee and I mean, I made the nominations and Mr. Cone was here and Councilman McIntyre was here and I just want to give the, all the people on the committee a thank you for their time and filling out the survey and going to the meetings and those that, you know, and, and, and really it seemed like we had some people take it very seriously and we appreciate that and it couldn't have been done without their input and the public. Um, also, uh, Ms. Christy Starnes, who's the manager of our wonderful library here in town, Union West, wanted me to spread the word. Uh, years ago, the Lions Club had put a machine in to help visually impaired people read. Uh, it's broken, doesn't work, but it doesn't have to be fixed because now they have what's called a, she wants everybody to know that if you have a visually impaired person, they can go to the library and they have, a, they have what's called a pen reader. And she wants to get the word out that visually impaired people can go to the library It'll read the words and tell them what it says. So it's part of their program that they put in. A lot of people don't know about it because they were looking for that machine before, but they have this now. So, and now you know why I asked the questions. I talked to Miss Star. <laughs> so the, uh, but she wanted to get the word out, and I told her, hey, and I get the mayor here. He's good talking too. We'll spread the word, right? So and everybody else. But uh, also want to remind everybody we had the back to school bash Sunday, August seventh. Uh, they are taking volunteers and you can register online if you want to bring your kid to that. So they have a Facebook page with a link where you can go and register your child. I'll remind everybody about the National Night Out August 2nd at Chestnut Square Park from 6 to 9. Uh, usually we have a captain there who you, little Joe T's practicing this strolling, who will be on the dunk tape. Uh, we can count on you this year again. Maybe we'll get the mayor too, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, so the, uh, but anyway, the, it's a great thing to have free hot dogs, correct? So the, uh, but yeah, that's a great thing. I just want to remind everybody of that. Appreciate everybody out there and all you're doing and all the support that we get up here. And thank you staff and thank you communications department for turning up the thing so I can hear. I really appreciate that. Thank you, and glad to see you again. So I hope you're paid well for today. <laughs> As always. Yeah. Karen, it was good to see your face come in. Miss Cox does a wonderful job for us, but you'll always be missed. Uh, you were here a good while, and uh, you're very well liked, and, and uh, you're always welcome here. So uh, if Miss Cox can't make it sometime, we always hope that you, you can uh, come back in and and sub out for so 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 glad to see you um there were some things i took notes on tonight's meeting um one of the things i really appreciate is i thought the council did an extremely good job of communicating with people in the in the audience answering uh questions that that um, miss hayes had came up and we all kind of contributed to that and uh, i just appreciate your concern uh, council for for the residents you you're uh, you're special in that way so thank you um, also uh, I think that being said is a reason that another reason that we're a top 15 city uh, is because we care we have a staff that cares we have a council that cares no matter what people say we care and I think you know it uh, you, you don't you don't hide that it, it it's uh it, it's just there you see it um, so thank you, uh, council and staff. Uh, tonight I, I wanted to, I always thank the staff, but Brandy, was it your birthday th this month is it also? Well, happy birthday. Uh, I, we're, we're lucky to have you and appreciate the job you did on the comprehensive plan and all the hard work. I know that was a, a major undertaking and it took a, how long, approximately how many years or how long did that take? Well, thank you for, 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 but, but same, took longer, but same. okay. Thank you for, for doing, for doing that. We, we appreciate it. Uh, Carrie, I don't, you know, I just want to tell you a good job. 
thank you for uh, introducing uh, our uh, new employee, and thank you for for looking out for the employees. You know, thank you for uh, the bilingual thing was a great idea. So uh, I appreciate appreciate that. Uh, also, um, just uh, Tom, happy birthday! Tom's got a birthday coming up this month. Uh, by the way, if anybody wants a cupcake, there's lots of cupcakes in there, and the mayor said you could go in there and have one before you leave. So you just walk in that door or somebody stand out there and grab you a cupcake because I bet there's – you plan on taking them all home oh, with you, Tom? I wouldn't take any home. They're good. They are, and, and Tom says they're good. So if anybody wants a cupcake, I'd feel really good about uh, a cupcake. And um, I, I'm looking at – looking at my phone for one reason and one reason only. My wife texted me, and I don't ever look at the phone. I said, uh-oh, something's wrong. But I think what she wants me to do, and I want to see if she wants to meet me, I, I'm sorry, at the Snowball Cabin, and I'd invite everybody to come down. Let's see, no, not tonight. Never mind. I was going to invite everybody to the Snowball Cabin. The mayor would pay for it. So uh, I'm sorry. Maybe next time we'll go. We'll all go to the Snowball Cabin. Well, I tell you what, I don't need her. Let's go. Anybody wants to go to the Snowball Cabin? You're, you're welcome. You're welcome to go, and I'll I'll be there, huh? Yeah, take it for your cupcake. Wash it down. Wash that cupcake down. Uh, anyway, I'm just happy to be here, uh, and uh, so so blessed to to b just be asked to do this job, and and uh, I I appreciate it every day. So with that being said, can I get a motion uh, to close this meeting out tonight? A motion to adjourn the meeting. Mr. Amberg has made a motion. All in favor? Unanimous. Yes.